<laughs> My little kid is crazy about it. Yeah, I do this. <laughs> Things like that. He loves it. I'm going to do more of this. Wim Hof, thank you for coming on Under the Skin. Right on. We gave it some skin at the river. Yeah. I've never, uh, you know, so j just so that the people listening are up to speed, we've just swam in the River Thames together. It's not super cold, certainly not for you. For you, that's you probably barely noticed. But for me, I felt my testicles plunge initially to sub-zero temperatures. They would have been like a couple of zeros. And then I felt them very, very hot and powerful afterwards. When we were in that water, I said to you, what do I do? Where should I put my attention? And you said, nowhere. Exactly. That's why it should be. You know, sometimes you just need to let go. And the body is able uh, to solve it all. What we do is we are wear, wearing clothes all the time. We are destimulating the, the elements of nature on our body. And, uh, and we therefore think so much. And it's like unstoppable. And where are the sensations to the body? It's not there. Yet we have three times the world's length uh, of vascular channels inside of us and they are composed with millions of little muscles if they are not stimulated through the cold and heat and the elements of nature then uh, it gets weaker and, and guess what what is killer number one what kills millions of uh, people uh, every year is cardiovascular related diseases how come get into the river uh, thames be, uh, swim uh, and uh, take it on. You, you go out with your dog, don't you? It needs to pee and run and this and that. We are mammals. Mm. We should get out with the dog and into the water because it, it, it really is a vascular fitness uh, uh, workout. We have insulated ourselves from nature, from our own human nature, and from our environment. I think, you know, the difference between a human being as they could be and a human being as they are is the difference between a free bird in a forest and a battery hen whose energy is used entirely for industry, for commodification, for produce. Just in case, Wim, anyone listening to this doesn't know much about you, but I'm sure everyone does because you've been the most popular guest we've had. Lots and lots and lots of requests for you. Uh, you've, you you hold the world record for the farthest swim under ice. You reach the top of Mount Kilimanjaro within two days wearing only shorts. And what interest me uh, the thing that I, I really enjoyed the documentary about you I believe Vice made where I saw you being injected under clinical conditions scientifically observed injected with bacteria and able through breath techniques to control your immune system and fight off this bacterial infection the the, the main the, the the sort of I suppose the point of entry for understanding Wim Hof is that through breath through consciousness you can control the body to a degree not imagined before perhaps except in yogic or buddhist or deep deep christian and islamic traditions the mind can control the body to a degree we didn't anticipate and this has been scientifically proven through your work yes six years ago we had a comparative study to show that the autonomous autonomous is outside of our will it's no longer uh, uh, outside of our will. This autonomous uh, nervous system related to the uh, innate immune system, specific immune system and endocrine system, the hormonal system. You know, what if we feel bad, it's because we have a lack of dopamine. Is uh, serotonin uh, dopamine uh, level within the brain cells is suddenly too low and then you feel depressed. Can you do something about it? No, because it is autonomous. I tell you, right now we found a way to tap into the autonomic nervous system. So at that time, six years ago, no, nobody believed really what I was doing. They tested me, but I'm the Iceman. I can do special things. He is the Iceman. He's the brother of Batman and Superman. And uh, he is the Iceman. So, of course, uh, I was running marathons beyond the polar circle in shorts, uh, going up Mount Everest 
exposed uh, to the death zone in my shorts and uh, going under the eyes and all those things. I, uh, many records I did, many challenges. And then uh, the scientists began to see, hey, but uh, uh, what this man is doing is physiologically not possible according to our science and what has been written down. But he is doing it and he is a human. Let's test him. So they tested me. They, for 80 minutes, they had me uh, in, in, in ice. They took my blood and then uh, the blood, they exposed it to endotoxin. That's an E. coli bacteria, which normally uh, uh, creates a very violent reaction on the immune cells, even uh, in, the, in the blood serum. With my blood, zero reaction. That means zero inflammation zero inflammatory markers within the blood what is disease it's inflammation inflammation is the cause and effect of disease now this guy is showing zero reactions what is going on uh, but he is the uh, ice man he is an exception that confirms the rule so hey uh, that's it and that's that he is a freak of nature i tell you i'm not i'm uh, one of the twins identical and my twin brother is not able to do what I do. Why? Because I jump into the river Thames. I uh, let my body out together with my dog. My, I'm the mammal. I, I get into nature. And that made me a, into a deeper level of my physiology awakened to my mind. But nobody knew about that. So I said to these uh, doctors, uh, uh, what I can do, anybody can do. It's only training. It's only awakening because it's already there. Everybody is innately capacitated to rule over his autonomic nervous system. His, uh, 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 the healing of the body is within your command. I mean, I don't see hospitals in rabbit uh, world or uh, the wolves or the elephants. Only uh, uh, it's not there. And there are no hospitals. There are no psychiatric asylums or anything. Uh, there is no pharmacy. They deal with that themselves because every mammal is innately capacitated to heal himself, to be in connection with the specific immune system. We lost it because we wear clothes all the time. We are destimulated within our own physiology and it's not answering because there is no question. The question, the triggers are gone. The body is not responding. So uh, uh, all this vascular system, which is composed with millions of little muscles, they are very much connected to the cells and their reactions. These uh, cells are there and innately capacitated to respond, to adapt to the situation and to keep equilibrium, balance within it all. So... Uh, they, there they came, sorry, but uh, the doctors came and they said, okay, you say that everybody is able to do that. They took on the challenge, can you? Because if you are able to bring people to this control you have shown in a scientific experiment, then we have scientific evidence that we are able as humans uh, to go into the autonomic nervous system, immune system, in the deepest, and the endocrine system. That means we change the perspective of what humans are capable of against disease, both physical and mentally. Not little bit, big time. Mm -hmm. But before that, how much time do they need to train with you? Uh, 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 one year, one half year? I said 10 days. It became four days. In four days, I brought him uh, to the top uh, without former experience in the cold, in, in short, to the top of a mountain in Poland. And uh, it's funny almost because we went up the slope. It was minus 10 and one and a half hours. We had to go to the ridge, which is the, uh, the, the border of uh, Czechia and uh, Poland. And there these ninja uh, dressed like... Uh, military people with guns, they came over the ridge and they saw a, a, a group of people in their shorts coming up and it was minus 13 degrees wow. Celsius already. So uh, I told these guys in the beginning, 
to uh, change their mindset. Hey, guys, you are the new gladiators. You are going to win the greatest war ever of the ma most of misery and agony, that one of the bacteria and the virus. Four days later, they were on the on the flanks, on the on the on the shore of the uh, of the mountain to the ridge. Minus thirteen, we came across these people. That was funny. We made selfies uh, in the end, but then we went on to the top, and at the top it was minus twenty-seven. There we danced the Harlem Shake, all in shorts, minus twenty-seven, and I knew they are there, where Mother Nature meant it to be. Four days later, they were in the hospital. And they showed after 16,134 uh, test subjects been experimented on with the same E. coli bacteria all becoming sick, like fever, headaches, uh, not nice time. It's a controlled experiment, but uh, they haven't got a uh, nice stuff and they get some, uh, you know, 400 uh, euros, uh, uh, all of them. So, uh, yeah, uh, that, uh, for that, they do it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so 16,134 people were being tested and they all became sick. And now suddenly 12 people were very able, 100% score, to control the bacteria being uh, injected within a quarter of an hour. There we changed science. We changed the perspective of science. The autonomic nervous system, endocrine system, and the uh, immune system are no longer not accessible, very deeply accessible. So what this experience demonstrates is that uh, to the immune system and the various uh, anatomical systems that you have described, the experience of extreme cold and the experience of an invading bacteria or an invading virus is seen as the same thing, something that can be stress. repelled and controlled or right, st simply stress. And you, n far from being an anomaly uh, as the Iceman, the, uh, the beautiful... Uh, moniker that you have taken on been given you are able to teach these techniques to anybody so there are two things excuse me that i'd really like to know one is how did you i did my burp over there i turned away from the mic you immediately one second later did a burp down the mic what kind of mind games that win <laughs> <laughs> it's so, a good game it's like Synchronicity is coming together, it's sharing. <laughs> we are tribal. We're in a sealed space, we're burping ourselves to the next dimension. Yeah, and exactly, we're exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it's a burp away. <laughs> Transcendence is just yes. a burp away. So, Wim, like, uh, there's two things that I want to know. One, what are the techniques that can activate these systems that teach the body to deal with stress in a different way, whether it's climbing up a mountain in a pair of shorts and making friends with border patrol guard ninjas, or repelling E. coli injected into the bloodstream? What is it that you activate and how do you do it? Yeah, it's uh, actually very simple. Um, and uh, we got it on our website, it's very for free. It's an app, you take it on and you uh, learn the basics, uh, very much endorsed by uh, millions of data of scientific uh, It's a evidence. breath technique, basically. It's a breathing technique. Well, you, you know, wh what do you do when you go into the cold? The first thing... Gasp. Wait, <gasps> you breathe deep. Yeah. How difficult is that? This is what we do not do anymore because we wear clothes. We are destimulated. You uh, seem like a man whose only motivation in life is to get everyone naked, which used to be how I lived. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. This uh, over exaggeration of uh, clothes and. Uh, <laughs> You know, high heels, you know, it's uh, kind of nice, but uh, hey, hmm. uh, 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 the thing is. So we've become desensitized because we're living like this, but and this is a very simple breath technique that you can teach everyone. How did you discover that you could do this? Um, yeah, well, years of looking. Uh, there, uh, there's more than meets the eye. And uh, I became a sort of a debater, philosopher, looking into esoteric disciplines and and uh, all the yoga and the kung fu and the, the Japanese and the Sanskrit and all those things. That's what you you were interested in this stuff for years. Yes, I was. I was just and because I, of curiosity. Yes, yes. Curiosity is the best drive. Uh, uh, the finder, uh, the 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 seeker becomes the finder, in the end. But for that, you need an inquisitive nature. And that is a part of the condition uh, ways uh, we have uh, uh, we are schooled in. 
and um, yeah, uh, 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 and getting conditioned. Because you describe this stuff, you use very scientific language necessarily, because I think if you're talking about something as profound as being able to repel disease or withstand extreme temperatures, mm -hmm. people don't want to think of it as something yogic or woo-woo. They want to think of it as something scientific, something pragmatic and practical. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you always had a curiosity, you said, about Kung Fu, about yoga, about various techniques that are about, I suppose, mind over matter. When did you... What was it that, what was your breakthrough that you, when you realized you could control? The uh, a simple mo morning, uh, Sunday morning. It was, I was pondering in the park. There was the water. Uh, nobody was around because it's Sunday morning. And uh, uh, there was a thin layer of ice on the water and just got, felt attracted. I went into the water and uh, yeah, I got an answer from inside. It said, yes, uh, it felt so good. And I felt the power while I was into the ice water. I could stay and I, 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 I see it in front of me right now. Like I was wondering why I didn't feel any pain. And I, I could play with a thin layer of ice, like very subtle. And that was this wondering. And then I went out. I felt a rush. It felt great all day. Mm -hmm. So the other day I came back and uh, do the same and I felt the same and I felt so good. And when you feel good about something, you always come back. So that's what I did. I became conscious of my breathing. It was deeper, it was different. And when I was going uh, more profound into uh, my body through the breathing, I could do like 25. Don't do this at home because I did it gradually huh? it was very dangerous if you do this directly but i was able to do uh, uh in 25 deep breaths while being immersed in the cold ice cold water i became so charged the carbon dioxide out oxygen in different processes start up in the inside of the body became not only impervious to the cold the last uh, breath after the 25 always after the 25 <sighs> fully in hold go uh, five to seven minutes under the water and Whoa. like every day very controlled very still in the mind the only thing you could hear uh, down there in the fetus position i always was <laughs> Very still, fetus. Uh, what that is, and then the last half minute uh, is always preluded by having a pee. <laughs> the kidneys, yeah, it's like dying or something. Uh, something like adrenaline comes because there's a lack of uh, the right chemistry in the body, and that uh, uh, it uh, inaugurates the moment of going out slowly but surely. Mm. This is what I did every day, and it brought my body's uh, power to my attention and then i saw oh this breathing then i began to separate the breathing of the cold and i did that at home you now, started to do these breathing techniques of these deep breaths that you yes. then hold in yes you start to do it away from the water yes what were you exploring then with, uh, with no intention uh, or just you're just curious yeah, still? just curiosity and feeling good about it and and uh, I saw all the the chakras. What do you mean you saw them? You, you, you know, uh, lights. Yes, I saw them all. You saw them. Yeah, did 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 did. Oh yes, oh yes. Oh, no problem. It's all there. It's electricity, and once you are able to uh, manipulate the, uh, the nervous system uh, pneumatically, you are able to activate. It activates. Boom 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 boom, and they become visual. It's nothing uh, esoteric about it. Can you that's, it's there. Can you describe to me what you when you say you saw the chakras? What were you? Where were you seeing them? You were closing your eyes. You, you, you close envisage. your eyes. You see it all. It's a very beautiful, penetrating yet very soft to light, and it's beautiful. It's three dimensional, and you transform inside. Your body becomes electric. You feel it, uh, you feel it, and uh, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. But man, like uh, anything else, at a certain moment after years, we get bored with it. You get bored. I, I got bored. Like, hey, uh, 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 there is more. 
uh, uh, I got into these techniques and I saw it all and I could uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the noise in the brain it changes three times and you get a thousand bells that's uh, sahasrara as, uh, as we know in uh, yoga yeah that's how I say here yeah. muladhara Swadistan, Manipuraka, Anahata, Vishudi, Akya, uh, Sahasrara, uh, 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 Brahmarandra, uh, Samadhi. And then you get these layers of the Samadhi. Wim it is, is all there. Uh, describing the tattoos that are on my arm of the chakras. And you're saying that through deep meditative techniques achieved through controlled breathing, you can physically experience these archetypal and essential energies, which a lot of people that use the scientific type of language that you use would disregard as nonsense. But I'm very curious as to how you, for your own personal uh, mission for your own personal yogic journey have discovered information that has been written about has been spoken of before that when they we talk of the yogis and the rishis in vedic literature going into states of consciousness and coming back with new information about how to control the body's energy systems it seems to me that you are doing this again now that that you know exactly. the point the point of the spiritual life is to feel good yes. and many of us in contemporary social systems do not feel good because we are disconnected and we have allowed our personal being to become controlled by systems that do not have our best interests at heart that simply want us to be units of commodified energy that are not free so the first like these techniques first of all gave you access to sort of information that's you know you said not in an esoteric way but in a very real practical way do you, you now believe from you know from what's been demonstrated through your own personal ability to withstand extreme temperatures your own personal ability to withstand the I introduction of viruses into your body and then your ability to teach others that this will become more specific, more thorough. For example, do you think it would be possible to, for people with depression to control the amount of dopamine or serotonin that's in their systems through different techniques? Oh, yes, absolutely. The last... Uh, it, very, very nice to mention you and to show you uh, arm. And you got all the chakras over there. The, yes, yeah, they are all over there. And, uh, and with that, the, uh, the elements, you know, Prativijala, Tejas, Vaju, uh, Antakarana. Uh, what all are those this. elements? What the, are they? The, uh, Prativi, uh, the earth, oh. Jala, water, uh, Aki, uh, the, uh, the fire, and then the Vaju, the, uh, the, the air. And then you get the Antakarana, the thinking brain. So uh, all that... Uh, I know, I know all the Sanskrit, all about it. And uh, did you know uh, that before so you of, did this stuff? Uh, no, no. After, after, and li like parallel, but that I thought it was so awkwardly written and so inaccessible. And what is it? What is it not? I don't know. There was still a lot of confusion until I got into the cold water. And there, I found a connection. And then I found a connection that uh, uh, the br uh, breath was able to make me more powerful uh, 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 using the cold as a stressor to e uh, learn to equalize the power. I could stay for longer and longer. At a certain moment, I could stay all the night out in shorts in freezing temperatures and feel good. That is the power of breath. Breath is the life force. Only you have to connect it with your consciousness, with your awareness. You will. You will. It's like a baby, a, a, a little baby, uh, uh, slags. There's nothing wrong with it, but still not able to walk. It needs neurological connection. Mm. So we need neurological connection with the breath in order to uh, elevate this consciousness, this awareness, perception. Now they saw uh, perception. We got not five senses, we got eight senses. They, through all kinds of devices, they have uh, 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 seen different neurological networks. I mean, visual uh, cortex is a neurological network. Mm. But the sixth sense is also a neurological network. The seventh sense also, and the eighth sense. What are the objects and of these senses? The, the objects of the uh, sixth sense is the accessibility of the will to be able to go in any place of the brain. That is, going into the subconscious and the consciousness is the sixth sense. It gives you absolute confidence to go your path. Whatever is your path, doesn't matter. 
if you you are able at a certain moment from going from time space ego into the uh, 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 all the parts of the brain which is the subconscious and consciousness when it's necessary and the brain knows and the subconscious knows then it leaves you alone you are without stress you are a very confident man or woman human mm -hmm. number seven number seven uh, the proprioception a neurological network that connects the will with the uh, uh, specific immune system in the deepest with that we are able to get rid of disease in any way or to heal therefrom or prevent but we need to find this uh, a connection. We have shown this in, uh, six years ago with a group of people to be able, within a quarter of an hour, to tap into the uh, proprioception, uh, into this network at will, and the bacteria had no chance after 16,134 people. Why were they testing it before? Ah. Uh, Why did they test it so deeply before with 16,000 people? What were they trying to demonstrate at they, that point? Uh, trying to find a way to battle inflammation. And what were they using? Uh, uh, pharmaceuticals or? Uh, no, they were, you. Oh, they, uh, uh, of course, they uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. They have done a lot of studies uh, to make money, <laughs> to sell. So, uh, uh, and then comes a natural way, which is only uh, by accident, because there's no money behind so what happens when you, under clinical conditions, demonstrate the power of the mind to repel disease, to confront stress? What happens to the people that have supported these studies? Uh, do they say, oh, this is brilliant. Now what we can do is we can shut down Pfizer and Glaxo Industries and we can all manufacture the necessary medicines within our bodies? Or That what? is the thing. I think the signs... Uh, now is quite um, uh, sort of not corrupted but so linked with money and research uh, money for research yes. and uh, uh, we all need to make money and also doctors etc that they do not truly are I I necessarily I I into uh, finding uh, uh, he ways of healing uh, the people in natural ways but making money Yes. So, uh, and uh, that is the establishment. People need to bring bread on the table, as they say in the Netherlands. Mm. In we say that in England. Yeah. Well. Got to put Bre bread on the table. Bre bread on butter. the table. Exactly. That's money. Uh, uh, things are not really interesting. How how do you get your money? Since uh, uh, the, uh, it's, it's just a little side street because I want to talk about the number eight. Uh, mm, uh, yeah, a, a, yeah. a neurological network that is the interoception which lately I showed brain scans uh, having control top down by the will over the body that is a, a step beyond disease is what is uh, g uh, happening in nature and you have control over what is uh, uh, what, what the stressor is doing uh, on your body and that could be cold, heat, emotion, uh, anything. Uh, uh, and there was, uh, it was not known that we have a top-down possible control. So from the will into the body, interoception. Uh, we get into that. Uh, Meaning uh, that you can, with your own will, decide, right, now I am going to not experience this heat or I'm not going to experience this cold or I'm not going to experience this violence. You, you, uh, yes, um, you could... sort of. Or make uh, uh, the deepest part of the brain uh, at work, at will, uh, enabling uh, 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 this deepest part of the brain, the, the endocannabinoid system and opioids, uh, uh, the periaqueductal gray hemisphere. It's a part of the uh, uh, brainstem. If that is going to work, then it deals with whatever stress is coming to your body from the inside out. Do you use this in a practical daily way? Say, for example, you felt afraid or intimidated or under some kind of threat. Have you got examples of doing that in your own life? Yeah, I, uh, I deal with stress in many ways, like everybody. So uh, I'm a family father of six, and uh, I got a dog, <laughs> and two chickens, and uh, and fish, and uh, three turtles. And so when these and they need maintenance and all <laughs> and this and that. When those turtles and they shit sometimes, I get stressed about it. Right, time to yeah. bring in the system. Yeah, <laughs> bang. <laughs> it, it was it, it was uh, only when uh, these professors uh, came to me. 
a psychiatrist uh, professors and they told me asked me if i was willing to be subdued in an experiment uh, in a model they developed and this model was to bring stress uh, onto the body cold into a vest when was this? Uh, uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago in February. Is this in Germany or America? Uh, uh, Michigan. In Michigan. Detroit. And uh, Wayne State University School of Medicine. There, uh, they put me into a brain scan. And in a brain scan, you are not able to move. And uh, It's like an MRI, is it? MRI, yes. FMRI and brain scan. Mm. FMRI is more the body. Mm. And a brain scan is the brain. Mm. So uh, they put me in the boat a couple of times. And um, they had 74 people before that. One and a half year was the study already ongoing. 74 people uh, ha have been tested with the perfusion uh, vest, which is a vest firefighters uh, use underneath their equipment to keep cool. So it has tubes inside with co cold water. They pumped cold water into the perfusion first, and then it goes back, and uh, because the body wants to get warm or something, they cool it down and keep it on cooling. So what normally is shown is that the people with the uh, 74 people all showed uh, that the skin temperature was going down when it was cold. Warm when go uh, uh, up. Mm. Cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm. That, those are the graphics. Mm. Then they looked inside the brain, and that what is dealing with the stress is the prefrontal cortex was very uh, activated in in their cases, and uh, the insula, for example, when you do deep meditation for a long time, then the insula gets uh, this uh, uh, euphoric state activation. So uh, then you lose prefrontal cortex is going lower. It's like blue color uh, when euphoria is there because then the insula is working. It gets up. And uh, in all the cases, this was very activated and this was very low, like red and this was blue. And there was no other activation in the brain. This was dealing with the direct stress coming in. This is what they saw in the brain. And then they took me. And when I did nothing, the same graphics, they saw the same graphics. The prefrontal cortex very uh, activated and um, uh, the insula very little activated, like everybody else. So, and then they asked day three, Wim, now you, today you have to do what the Iceman is doing, the, your meditation. I don't know what I'm doing. I just do it. It's like in the water. What do you think of? Yeah, don't think, babe. Just be, you know. Just do it. And I, all these moments on Mount Everest and the Kilimanjaro, in the marathons under the ice, losing my way under the ice, uh, hanging by one finger in midwinter between hot air balloons, extremes, uh, staying for two hours in ice, and all uh, feeling fine. I was, hey, I gotta do that. What I always did, but now it's not nature around me, it's a brain scan, but I knew what to do. I had the confidence, I had to click, oh yeah, that's it. So I went, they put me in the brain scan, and uh, uh, they, they uh, uh, pumped the cold water in, but my skin temperature did not go down anymore. And like eight times, and uh, coming uh, and going, uh, like cold, warm, cold, warm, had no effect. I was one degree up, and I stayed over there, cold or warm, impervious, and not moving. No contraction of muscles, no deep breathing, because you cannot do that. You see a blurred images on the monitor, so you, I was not allowed to do anything, just by thought. And then they looked inside the brain, they saw very little activation of the prefrontal cor uh, cortex, mm -hmm. like blue, no activation. Very red, like uh, insula, very high up. Mm -hmm. Like, I was in euphoria. 
I was warm. The water was warm. It had never been cold to my, uh, to uh, to me, and uh, uh, and then they saw something they never had seen before, and that was the activation of the periaqueductal gray hemisphere, which is the deepest part of the brain uh, stem, the crocodile mind, the reptilian brain. We have no control over why because we never go like cold, warm. No, we are into this destimulative behavior and uh, all the people, uh, they lose the uh, connections because it's not necessary to, uh, 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 there's no need for the periaqueductal. Now, the periaqueductal gray hemisphere is the residence of our opioids and endocannabinoids. The cannabinoids, euphoria, nice feeling, like hashis, uh, like a uh, nice uh, wheat pot or whatever it is called, you feel wow, uh, great. They are activated at that moment uh, 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 within our system. But we got, we got this T-shirt. It says, "Get high, high on your own supply." It's there. It's there for us all. So they saw me uh, uh, activating that robustly, and then they said. We found the key components of the autonomous processes in the brain, thought of inaccessible by humans, now uh, accessible for, uh, of our conscious brain related to mood regulation. And uh, mood regulation, mood is anything, is emotion. Could be through cold, stress, uh, heat, stress, emotional stress, daily stress, all those things. And then they said this, is a transformational technique that will change mental health care. But how long will it take that it gets to the people who need it? My assumption is that because you have spent all that time practicing the with the you know clear and more physical conditions of exposure to cold, you have learned how to activate, you said, the insular aspect of your brain. It's not consciousness. In this case, it's your brain. It's a physical, measurable thing. So that when you are required to access it, you can. I felt that, so that's, a, you have a form of practice. Fascinating that you could access that crocodile mind. It makes me feel that perhaps the way that um, our brains have evolved is in, you know, obviously any kind of evolution is by its nature incremental. But it seems that what must have happened with human beings is that part of the mind, this crocodile mind where the opioids, you said, were, my ears pricked up at that point, Wim, let me tell you, where the opioid receptors are stored, this part of the mind must not, because it's formulated so, uh, so far, uh, so, uh, separated by such distance of time from the, co the conscious mind that most of us occupy, the relationship between these two parts of the brain is not being correctly formulated. And but because we live in these uh, lives where we l are encouraged to live on one particular frequency, we don't know how to travel between these parts of consciousness. Now, when I think of the mystical role of the shaman, the shaman is the member of the tribe that can travel between levels, levels of consciousness. The shaman is the member of the tribe that knows how to access the crocodile mind, the insula, knows how to go between these levels. And how do we see shaman represented in tribal cultures? As different totemic animals. They know how to access different parts of the animal mind. I like this. Mm. So for, for me, these practices that you are developing is a kind of a new shamanism, a new way of accessing different parts of the brain. You know, they, obviously the relationship between the conscious, consciousness and the brain is a strong one, but it suggests to me that there is a relationship between consciousness and the body if, um, you know, the skin temperature wasn't altering. So it feels to me that, you know, when if you were to try to, uh, if you were, which obviously is your mission, to popularize these techniques so as many people as possible have access to them, it, it seems likely that before we could get to the point where we are able to regulate and control our own dopamine, that we would have to go on a process of learning these more basic forms of control. Would that be correct? Yes. I, I always say, make it simple. A, 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 a cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. Mm. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Start having cold showers. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And take a warm one uh, later, but first a cold one. You know what happens when you... First, take a cold one. Oh, I need to go into the stress. Yeah. No, you activate your conscious brain into the brainstem. 
I had my my uh, personal experience of what you were describing and what you have mastered was one time I jumped into a very cold po uh, pond in someone's garden just to experience it. And like you say, I gasped and stuff. And once I was in the water, I was thinking, my God, my body is designed to be able to cope with uh -huh. this and I'm never letting my body experience uh -huh. it. So I'm living in just one room in the mansion. Uh -huh. I'm not exploring the other rooms in the mansion. I'm not opening the doors. I'm not looking exactly. at what's accessible. Exactly. You know, what happens is uh, because we think so much on this one level way of using our brain, that's the neocortex, it gets 25% more blood flow. The rest is getting 24, 25% uh, less. It's not. It's like surviving. It's not blooming. It's not able to be co uh, connected with because the right biochemistry is not there. So in case when people get out of balance, it's like a dopamine serotonin, which is inside our brain cells. Uh, when that happens, we don't know how to bring the blood flow over there. You go into cold showers. It's not about toughness. No, it's about bringing the blood flow right in the brain stem. And with that, it passes the mid brain, which is the mammalian brain, which is the feeling. And that feeling suddenly gets the right biochemistry. And then you are able with your will, which is a neurological muscle, to co of course, you like to uh, 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 b bring balance to the biochemistry uh, and accordingly the, the dopamine and the serotonin, which is a natural thing to be. But we denaturalized by bringing 25% more over there on a regular basis. And we, we survive, we go, we nurse. But when the problem, when the shit hits the fan, we don't know how to get uh, in there and, uh, uh, and bring balance. So if you go into the cold shower and deal with the cold and or do these breathing techniques, then you go into the deepest and with that, it activates the right biochemistry and it needs to pass the midbrain. You'd get not 20%, you get 100% of the brain activation. And we have shown that in the late last study with Hanover, in the, uh, one of the two best brain scans of the world, they saw it was disco in like uh, doing these breathing techniques. They said, uh, Germans, eh? Say it's disco. <laughs> now you know Germans dancing and uh, a little bit uh, like wood. <laughs> but hey, it was disco. And he said 100% of the brain was working. That is biochemistry. And that is what we're, where we miss out on through our destimulative comfort zone behaviorism. So through these techniques, we're not just talking about the mind, we're talking about the brain. Aspects of the brain, parts of the brain are lighting up that are not normally lighting up. Yes. Through doing this, we're accessing, of course, the brain's biochemistry. We're getting access to healing and a totally different perspective on the world. What have these- Healing and feeling, yes. Yes, healing and feeling. I love that little phrase. I'm going to write it on my pad. But what, how is it, what do you think is the impact on your intellect? You know, I spoke once to a man called Ed Stafford. He's a sort of a survivalist. He used to be in the uh, Marines or SAS. You know, he's a hard guy. And uh, like he became, he likes to survive in extreme environments. Uh, he once spent six months alone on an island. Before he went, he spoke to these uh, Aboriginal men. And he said, like, he, he said the main thing they taught him was, he said, he said, we in our culture, we believe we have three brains. The brain of the belly, this is the main brain. Brain. The brain of the heart, this is the second brain. The brain of the head, he said, that your culture, the West, the people of Europe, the people of North America, that you guys live in, he said, for that, we have the same word that we use for a tangled fishing net. For, for us, this part of the brain is just for problem solving. Don't live in there all the time. And like you were saying about that 25% of the blood flow is in there, you know, it's live, it's live, you know, we're lighting that part of the brain up. So much of this much of these techniques what it's helping you to do it's not like a it's not a cerebral and intellectual thing it's like because i was wondering when we were hanging out for example when there was that work we went down to the river near where i live there was a man there in a canoe now i'm english so i see this man in the canoe i'm like oh no this man's there in a canoe he's going to see me and wim hof get into the water in our pants right and sure enough he's there eating his sandwich and wim hello <laughs> 
Oh, good day to you. <laughs> and, and, and I like getting the water, you know, with you and stuff. And the, like the man leaves. You uh, do you have any time for thinking about social anxiety? What other people think of you? Whether and also when we met the farmer Oliver, and you went, well, goodbye, Oliver. <laughs> do you think about like uh, are these kind of things? Are they on your mind, or have you lit up? aspects of your brain mind consciousness to such an extent that social anxiety what other people think of you don't really register uh, exactly mm. uh, you know uh, you're, you're talking gut yes. uh, the microbiome which we just showed that uh, we found a relationship between the microbiome and the uh, and the brain which is also uh, the cause and effect of, say, depression. Oh, this is happening in the gut, you're saying? In the gut, yes. It's a microbiome uh, 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 deregulated through inflammation, getting through the uh, blood brain barrier. But that's a, a little aspect. It's of interesting it. because many of these things that the spiritual community takes for, uh, like, believes is true, and the, say, scientific or atheistic community say, no, this is not true, they these things are true and can be proven by science, but there typically is no appetite to demonstrate that they're true. One of my frustrations, are like, you know, I respect and love and I'm grateful that you speak primarily in scientific terms because science is obviously a massive part of the answer. But when people present scientific findings as neutral, I say, well, it's not entirely neutral because look at what the focus of science is. Science's objectives are capitalist object objectives. Only exactly. The studies that are taking place are the mm. studies that are funded by organizations that ultimately want to commodify and commercialize their findings. People aren't studying, hey, it looks like people can cure cancer by thinking and breathing differently. No one's paying for that study sure. no one wants that to happen so that is not neutral yeah it, it is and yeah it, you know and it's almost mammalian logic that people who are uh, selling medicines and uh, pills they don't want to to lose their clients no to so. go back to that thing you don't get embarrassed in front of the farmer then what did you feel what's in your mind when we see the farmer and when we see the canoeist you just what do you think oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a, it's a bloody great day. <laughs> <laughs> You're not neurotic. You are not a neurotic man. Are you warm enough in here? Do you want me to turn the temperature up? You okay? Do you want a blanket? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Mother Nature takes care of me. <laughs> Thing is, you, you know, um, uh, there is three times more neural activity coming from our heart to our brain than vice versa. But we keep on thinking in the Western world and dominating our feelings. We close it up. Mm. We take 25% more blood flow in the neocortex all the time. We don't know how to sleep or we get anxious. Do we you get sleep this well? I sleep like a rock every... Uh, uh, uh. Uh, last night, I was up at uh, 3.30. Uh, 3 no, 3 o'clock. Uh, for one hour and then I it's went totally to sound sleep. Totally there. Yeah. Why? What yeah. did you woke up for an hour. What did you do? Meditate? Yeah. Uh, Do you sit up? I, uh, I, no. You stay I, I, laying down? Yeah, contemplate and uh, do conscious breathing. Do you ever have problem getting an erection? Oh, no. Uh, no I, I, I can tell you why. Because you get an, it's an, an erection is an automatic process, no? Like, uh, typically, because like, I know that because in that film No about inhibitions there. Absolutely not. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and the professor uh, with whom I work, he, he tells uh, doing these breathing techniques and going into the cold this way that uh, 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 makes the expression of the genomes in the DNA responsible for uh, virility uh, really turned on. Hmm. So this could be a killer for the Viagra business uh, uh, anytime, you know? Uh, not only if you do this breathing, as I uh, yeah mentioned a little uh, about it, if you do this breathing, then uh, uh, when you had, uh, have been intimate with your uh, woman, uh, which is a nice way to say it, intimate. It mm -hmm. could be anything. A cup of tea is being intimate. Yes, together. yes, you've been very intimate so, with that one. Yes, and uh, so there are different ways of being intimate uh, uh, with uh, uh, your woman. And when you have done, uh, you know, and exhausted, like, uh, oh, that done, you do 20 minutes of breathing, and you go again, <laughs> full on. It's amazing. Just for that, this podcast is already successful. Everybody is going to love it. Not like it, love it. Because we love that. 
So, uh, uh, not only You're lockdown... You're like the most Dutch person in uh, history. It's like everything that British people think of Dutch people, the kind of sort of permissive nurse, the extreme nurse, the sexuality. You've taken it to the absolute pinnacle. Wim, teach me some breathing right now. Show me some so I can demonstrate it. All right. Um, you got a clock here? Yes, sir. So, get, get, get me the timer on. You've got it. Right. I want you to go within two rounds... Up to two and a half minutes without air in your lungs. No, I can't do that. I can't do... Th- yeah, yeah, only die, and but then reincarnate. <laughs> <laughs> what if I don't come back as a guy with this haircut? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> so that's two minutes. You have to just press start. Okay. So... <clears throat> Tell me what to do. La- la- let's do just one round, and mm. about two minutes without breathing, you will stay. Okay. And without air in your lungs. Okay. And uh, well, uh, the consequence of that, all that, is uh, is a uh, uh, is a chain reaction uh, within the body into the deepest part of the brain, uh, and the activation of the uh, adrenal axis uh, of uh, getting into the brainstem and activate also the opioids and um, uh, endocannabinoid system, which is responsible for activating the immune system. You reset your body to its primordial state. That is what we are going to do. But don't mind about it, just do it. Jenny, will you do the timing so Wim doesn't have to worry about timing? Yes. Do you need me to give the signal? Yeah, come, but we, let's keep this as the podcast. Let's not do anything that we just not lose any content because this is lovely. Okay, so I'm ready to start now. Good. I like that. So, Jenny, just don't let it go off. So, okay, so you're going to teach me this technique. It's on two minutes. Oh, and you can get it to two minutes, 30 seconds. And normally we do this uh, like uh, four rounds in the morning. It takes about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So now we do one round. About five minutes is going to take. Okay, this will be interesting. Anybody is able to do this uh, uh, along on a sofa or sitting uh, safely like you are sitting uh, now? And or bad. Don't do this in water. Don't do this uh, behind uh, wheels. The wheel of a car. Uh, because uh, you really get into past your conditioning, past your uh, consciousness. You can go, and there's nothing going on. It's great what is going to happen. Your body becomes very alkaline. Uh, which is just uh, uh, newly been proven in a scientific research, be going to be published very soon. Oh, is a lot related to this, how simple it is, how many complications will go away if you only do this. Let's go. Right. Fully in. <sighs> Let him go. <sighs> Through Let the mouth, huh? Yeah, uh, mouth, nose, doesn't matter. Whatever you feel. <sighs> I do it like this. Okay, with your mind, follow your breath. Go on, go on. Fill up your belly, your chest, everything you got. Fool you. Let it go. Fool you. Let it go. We will do 30. 30 breaths. We almost got 10. Fully in. Let it go. Relax. Fully in. Then you let go. Fully in. Let it go. It's all alright. Fully in. Let it go. Here is the meditation. Here is the going deep. Even people meditating for years are not able to go as deep as we will go now. And go. Go with the flow. Like the sea. Waves getting to the shore. And then letting go. And there it comes again. Fully and letting go. 17. Fully in. Letting go. Fully in. Letting go. Fully in. Letting go. You feel light in your head, loose in your body, tingling. It's all all right. Breathe into it. Breathe into it. Intensify. Whatever you feel is different. We are charging up the body. We want to go into the depth. We are charging up the body. Yes, 23. Seven more. Fully in. 
Let it go. Fool Letting go. Fool Four. Fool Three. Fool Two. Fool One. Here comes the last one. Fool Let him go. And stop after the exhalation. Just witness. Feel the feeling, the rush. It's your blood in your nervous system. Charges, there's no need for breathing whatsoever. It's no hypnotizing. Just the magic of the physiology at work. Now we are, your body, your nervous system is getting into the brainstem, slowly and surely. Oxygen levels begin to decrease rapidly. Thus the brainstem is beginning to answer, hey, there is no oxygen, but you are alkaline. Your chemistry is right, so there is no need for breathing. But the crocodile doesn't understand. He says, I have to survive. Adrenaline shoots out. You get a reset to the, your primordial state wherein the immune system suddenly is within the reach of the will. And it's happening. All what is not necessary in the body, the wrong cells, cancer cells, half cells, it is being expelled because you need to be in function. A danger is happening. The body goes into this autonomic nervous system state of being to be the best of yourself. And you are doing it all consciously. You are at ease. This is the way we get into the deepest and take over control in the neurological pathways. Right over there, blood flow is going into the depth into all the parts of the brain. Any brain scan is able to tell that. So there it is. Okay, breathe in. And breathe in and hold. And squeeze to your head. 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, let it go. That is one round. Now, this is what these people did in the hospital, and then the bacteria had no chance. How simple it is. And when we are dealing with uh, inflammation, causing depression in the end, we uh, take away the inflammation with uh, uh, doing this within a quarter of an hour, and people feel re revived of their depression and depressed state. So it's a, it's a cure for anything because we are built to be able to prevent and heal from disease, both physical and mentally. And this is the way. And possibly, as you said in the beginning, um, I've been entering uh, into these different yogic states and uh, getting uh, knowledge from the ether or wherever it is. Because this is the, uh, w what they want to bring in, in, into the world. And it can be experimented and tested meticulously through uh, uh, scientific scrutiny and uh, comparative research that it is simple to enter back on with our contemporary mind into the depth of our beings, of our brain, our mind, our spirit, our soul. Anything is uh, over there. When we were doing the exercise, I f your commentary was right on it. I felt like, uh, oh, that is the part, the part where you feel like, oh, God, I've got to breathe, I've got to breathe. Like there's a moment where something, a powerful impulse, fear, fear. And so fear is adrenaline, I suppose. F what we mentally label as fear, that must be us registering. Hippocampus, the deepest yeah. part of the brain. A part of it is hippocampus. It's a storage of fear, trauma, and all those things. They are being, uh, you learn to control them within 10 minutes. 
Hmm. We did one round. Yeah. Second round, you would have gone two and a half minutes without yeah. air in the lungs. You get even deeper. More blood flow gets there. And you will, your neurological pathways, they tap in. Yeah, yeah, this is fantastic. What I notice about the state afterwards, I'm a person that has quite a lot of, you know, my um, narrativizing mind is very active. I think a lot. I think a lot of words. You know, I think a lot of thoughts. Yes, this is maybe also the elevation of intellect. Hmm. You become sharper, when faster, I, speed that, of light. Yes, yes. In that state, though, the uh, I there was some cessation. Like afterwards, there was a like a for me it was a slower. You know, like I feel now, I feel sort of suspended, Matrix, pretty peaceful. Slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. seeing it, speed of light. Yes, because we are light. Uh, the nervous system, electricity, is electricity system, and we go uh, uh, within that system and activate it into the deepest, thus it cleanses us. Everything that we categorize, we categorize everything according to our animal experience, time itself. The way we see time is categorized because our understanding of the cycles of the sun and the cycles of the earth and the cycles of the season. But time itself, there's no objective actual quality and it seems that through accessing different parts of the consciousness we can change the way we relate to time we can change the way we relate to mm. disease we can change the way we yes. relate to one another that mostly uh, what civilization osho once said civilization is a clearing in the forest you know all of our systems all of our cities all of our laws all of our beliefs just a dent in nature and if you alter consciousness itself at the level of the individual let alone at the level of tribes and cultures and systems then we can formulate different laws different relationships when i see the that the political debate takes place within very narrow parameters we should r regulate this we should fund this we yeah. shouldn't do that yeah. for me this feels like a very small conversation brexit don't brexit trump don't trump for me it's like well this is a tiny molecule of the conversation and what we need to access is a transcendent different realm about the way we organize our cultures more truthfully in alignment with who we are as individuals and who we are as societies if it's possible to find different ways of sharing resources let's use those if it's possible to find different ways of healing our bodies let's use them mm. you know, it's actually a very practical system that i would advocate for rather than continually advocating for systems that retain power in a very narrow bandwidth of our social systems yeah. almost anything you look at as a problem in the world today whether it's ecological meltdown medical meltdown bad food being proliferated it's because it, for someone it's not a problem for someone uh -huh. it's beneficial mm. ecological meltdown not mm. a problem for Halliburton mm. uh, food the, the diet of the uh, American or uh, anglophonic world not a problem for the Ooh, industries yes. that control it mm. the, the level of heart disease cancer not a problem for the people that produce the drugs that exactly. solve those problems we can no longer trust this system we have to learn to transcend the way we are schooled and the way we are able to use our brain, which is 20%. Mm. Before, it wasn't n n not too much the matter because the industrialization and all was not at that big scale, that refined uh, and uh, mm. control to make money and to uh, control our minds of uh, how to make more and to make more money. So that is only the last 200 years or something and now it's really embedded in psychological control over the people i say okay i don't mind what you guys all do hey you want to make money i understand but i want to have 100 percent control over my mind now because i don't trust you guys anymore <laughs> so i found a way to tap into the brain and to find a, a way to go past this conditioned mind and there suddenly I find there are ways to heal myself. There are ways to uh, pass it on to a anybody else. There are ways to deal with de depression and mental disorders. There are ways to get more energy out of myself. I own my own mind. Hmm. And I'm showing this to others to, uh, hey, 
own your own mind. It's possible. We got millions of data that we are so conditioned through hundreds and years of stealth and being uh, brainwashed in, in, in certain ways that is serving a system. Our schooling is serving a system wherein we get careers and all that is not so necessarily serving happiness, strength, and health. So it was the, uh, Dave Asprey uh, in his podcast. He asked me, Wim, well, uh, I never asked this question. Uh, what do you think of enlightenment? And uh, uh, please p put it in one sentence. All Bibles and Qurans written on that shit. So uh, I, I, I came with the, up uh, oh, I got it. Just be happy, strong, and healthy, and the rest is bullshit. So that bullshit, <laughs> the, the way we are defending and carrying, we are not light but dark. We are not light but heavy. That shit needs to go. And uh, uh, ask yourself every morning, uh, are you happy, strong and healthy? Are you going for your dream vision? Are you going for your state of your, your subconscious? Uh, are you learning how to make full usage of your own mind? So the spirit is able to grow and your soul is able to uh, shine like the sun and it's there because the rest is bullshit if, if you don't. I think most people don't believe that it is possible to be happy. I think most people don't believe it. I think most people think this is life. I mean, if you think about uh, some of the philosophical ideas that govern the cultures that we are from, you know, life is suffering. Uh, you have to work hard. You know, like these kind of like people don't. Most of the people I talk to don't think. Oh, it's possible to live a blissful life free from tyranny. I got. I got it. This morning I had a talk with my son about this. Ainam, your son, who is here yeah. with us, who is managing this situation brilliantly, oh, yes. responding to your constant demands for photographs. Yeah, 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 a lot more. Yeah. Uh, uh, what did you yeah, say? Logistically, he is doing everything around me. Yeah. Uh, I, I was not into anything. I had, uh, uh, I had to pay the, uh, the taxes. And, uh, I'm not into paper, so I had a, a guild with the taxes and... Uh, uh, and then he came along. He built it, uh, built uh, this format of this website and all uh, in, in, into it. But this morning we had a discussion, and this discussion, Wim, you cannot say that everybody want, uh, wants to be happiness because there is no light without the dark. Uh, you gotta experience some shit, shitty moments to appreciate the feelings which are so uplifting and elevating and nice and great. I said, absolutely, I do agree. <laughs> hey, because, <laughs> yes, I do, I do. Uh, uh, because what, what I uh, uh, say is, we found the compelling evidence of the key components of the autonomous processes inside the brain related to mood regulation. And that mood regulation, emotion, is... Uh, I found ways to regulate that at will, consciously, for those in need. And for uh, and who are the ones who need it? People who are depressed or having bipolar issues or uh, psychosis, schizophrenia, anxiety, uh, fear, uh, PTSD, trauma, all those things, the real terrorists of our mind, mm -hmm. we are able to regulate, guys. It's there. We found the ways to tap into the brain and take over the control when is necessary. For the rest, the life, let it be very, very colorful. <laughs> That's a really beautiful message. Let me make sure that I've asked you everything that I need to. It's been amazing hanging out with you. Uh, but I, I would like to understand before we go, let me understand before we go, like, can you connect with the person that you were before you had access to this information? Can you remember living a life where you didn't have this zeal, where you didn't have this certainty? Can you remember feeling like, oh, God, I'm depressed today? Or, or? Oh, yeah. America. I mean, I came from these valleys. Depression and all. Mm. I know those ones. I lost my wife in uh, 95. She jumped from an eight-story down. Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, and he is my oldest son there. Enam is the oldest son. He was, uh, 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 he was 11 at the, at the time. And the youngest was like seven years younger. So this is unimaginable years. pain. You lost your that, wife. They lost their Broken mother. hearted. And you know what? She, was, uh, she had schizophrenia. 
yeah, as they called it, and they put all kinds of injections into her and antidepressives, and she only got worse. So that is my burden. That is my start of my journey deeply within to seek solace, to seek solutions. I wasn't aware of that. I was only brokenhearted and having little money and have four kids uh, to bring them up uh, by myself and uh, no wife around me. I mean, the, the love of my life. Beautiful lady, very lusty in life and beautiful. She was beautiful. Look, look at him. He's a, he's a handsome Fine, little guy. Fine, handsome young yeah. man there. And I got three more, man. And I, I, I got two daughters and uh, two sons. And they're all very handsome and pretty and this and that. She was very pretty and very uh, alive. But then this terrorist in the mind. And then uh, 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 regular healthcare. With all their knowledge, all the doctorships and professorships and whatever they got in knowledge... It just got worse, and she jumped. She gave it a kiss to to the little babies uh, before she went. She was very conscious of what it was. It was a real terrorist, a real terror. And that terror, now, we are able to tackle. I found, as a drop out of school, in my, uh, in my journey since then, uh, finding and uh, 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 looking into nature, yeah, the cold brought me stillness in in my mind. The breathing br uh, brought stillness, like control over the emotion. And then I came, uh, I did uh, many records. Uh, 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 and then the scientific world came uh, to me and they began to experiment. And now I have come in connection with the psychiatrists in the world and the best top researchers on the DNA, the best ones. As a drop out of school, and I'm showing them how to go and tap into the deepest part of the brain and to learn to re-regulate anything uh, that deals with our mood, which means uh, depression, psychosis, bipolar, uh, schizophrenia, uh, trauma, uh, fear, uh, anxiety. Yes. So anything of those, we are able to tackle. This is my message. It comes from a broken heart. Oh. And now it is full circle. We got the knowledge. It came from no, uh, uh, nature, and nature has the answers, whereas the books are failing, mm -hmm. and the system is failing. And we got this message now for you. And this is my podcast with you. Uh, you go also very fast uh, 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 past all uh, the perceived limits and the conditioned mind uh, within this system. You are a true seeker, and thus we find true findings and this is one mm, this is good stuff thanks Wim Hof thank you what about how did you may I say I feel that we have established that you have discovered something that is very powerful I feel that we have established that this is something that can be conveyed to other people that it's not just a, an anomaly a, a quirk it's something that we can all learn and we can perhaps think about how to make this information accessible and simple and useful to a number of people with all sorts of different abilities and all sorts of different uh, challenges. It's interesting for me to think about the moment of inception being uh, one of loss and pain and the sort of ordinary tragedy of losing somebody to suicide and uh, manic depression or schizophrenia. schizophrenia. How then, prior to these techniques, did you survive? As a father, how did you deal with grieving children? How do you deal with that? How did you deal with that? What was the process? Uh, yeah, with the uh, grieving children, uh, I was just being with them. We, uh, but the children made me survive. Nature healed me. Hmm. That that it is. You you can't think. You got to be. I remember uh, every weekend. Uh, 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 after the uh, 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 during the night, uh, uh, they came to my bed, and we slept all the five together like a nest. Mm. And uh, 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 very, uh, it closes. It's naturally that it closes, that it becomes a nest again, a place of safety. And without thinking, you just do it. You are simply there for them, hundred percent. Mm. And the loss, later I began to work on uh, my broken heart. But there was no time 
of dealing with a broken heart uh, or the film because the, uh, four children are very demanding but beautifully also because they don't let you think too much about your sorrows and your uh, grief also it seems for me that you instinctively use thought as most people understand it merely as a means to communicate and articulate deeper experiences even when we were in the river and i was in the river i was cold you know like i'm telling you right okay i'm cold now you're saying uh like i, I was expecting you were gonna say right breathe in through the right nostril block the left nostril now exhale through the mouth now hold pull the uh, mula banda tighten yep. adiana banda i was thinking oh it's gonna be like you know very prescriptive but you said instead uh, no, just be in the cold. Be in the cold. <laughs> and uh, then Let I your said, body do what your body is able to do. And yeah. like in this moment, I uh, recognize that, you know, like, and, uh, like as I said to you also, what shall I do? Where shall I put the attention? Don't put it nowhere. Nowhere. Don't put the attention nowhere. Uh, yes. Other things I remember from this brief experience. Uh, when we were doing the, is that Tai Chi we were doing on the shore? What were we no, doing? No, no, it just it's, came up with that. It's you a, came up with that a, as actually, improvised Tai Chi. Actually, <laughs> I just actually, came, I don't know what that was. I was just a, moving actually, around. Actually, uh, once I had no toilet and I had to uh, do my poopy. So I had to stand in this awkward position. They call it a horse dance. The Shina Banda Bumba uh, uh, posture, asanas. Uh, whatever you yeah, know yeah uh, the thing is i uh, lately did it for three hours uh, uh, barefoot in the snow and you know what in three days i do it with anybody in the snow barefoot standing in that awkward uh, 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 horse uh, stance yes yes which activates the adrenal axis so when did you know that it uh, actuates the yeah, adrenal yeah, uh, uh, well, when you go into the cold you learn <laughs> it's interesting mythically uh, like in uh, mythology the acknowledgement that to discover the truth of who you are you need to go into the belly of the beast you need to go under the ocean you need to go into the darkness into the pain that's where you will discover yeah. the true gift of the self if you never go below the surface if you never go under the skin then you will never discover the truth of who you are you will only vibrate on the higher frequencies so for you the cold has become your teacher you have become the the yogi of the cold from the cold you've discovered deep truths now um yeah the, the other thing when you're throwing the stick for my dog bear and you say rouse rouse which i guess is a dutch word for yeah. lost let, uh, let it go let it go <laughs> yeah. let me throw this stick and the dog listened i goes oh he, he speaks dutch uh, and he went, universal yeah <laughs> it's universal yeah so it's um for me, it seems what one of the things that I am understanding is uh, that underneath the physical and material reality, there is a truer realm which we can access through techniques. And if we access it, we can change ourselves if we never try to access it. And the first point of not accessing it is to not believe it's there. If you're like, there is no ulterior realm. There's only this. There's only what can be measured. There is only the material world. That means you are never going to investigate. You are never going to have what you described as the most important ingredient, the curiosity. The curiosity that, yes, maybe it's possible. Another ingredient, the faith and the optimism that I think it is possible to be happy. I think it is possible to be strong. When you have these beliefs, then you can investigate with faith the possibility to become a different person, which you must have needed a lot of when confronted with the loss of your children's yes. mother. You yes. must have needed faith, hope, curiosity, and then you can fall into nature. Because what I felt at that moment in that in that river was, oh, what I'm, I'm not going to be... Because I have a facility for thought, for fast thinking, uh, but there, often there are situations you cannot think your way out of. There, You just have to be. You just have to be and let go and be in the cold water. And then other energies that are not at the frequency of fast, frenetic, cerebral activity mm. are able to be accessed. Yes. I mean... Uh, they will, after this... And if you go regularly into the the, the cold shower, uh, a cold shower a day uh, it keeps the doctor away. You will even become better at it. Do you think I will win? Mm, yeah, I'm doubting now. No, <laughs> you will. <laughs>
Man, I think that's a really fantastic podcast. I, well, I, I've really enjoyed the experience of getting in the water, of playing with the dog, of hanging out in our pants, doing what I thought was Tai Chi, but it's actually something you were making up on the side of a river, just two guys standing in pants, yep. moving about. I hope people will enjoy the video footage. We'll have, to, we'll have to release that. I'm very interested in your continued exploration of these techniques, and I would like to help you in popularizing them and communicating them in a right way on. that's uh, accessible and useful. That, that, that is great. I think you're a great man in bringing uh, complicated matters to the people and uh, with that the awareness and uh, uh, with that physical awareness and physical ability to deal with uh, things like emotions and, uh, uh, and faith. Let's have faith back again that we are able to regulate our own happiness, strength and health. It's all about that, guys, and it's there. We got all the evidence, and we are in popularizing uh, together with this man, and with this man, and uh, we are just two blokes bringing something very complicated in very simple ways to you, because it's there, because we love you. All right, Wim Hof, thank you very much for coming on under the skin. Right on. Fantastic. Yeah, great, great. Right, we paused for we thought the podcast was over there, but then we kept talking, and Wim said this, which was very interesting, which I wanted to include in the podcast. So there was a little gap, and then he said this: "There must be uh, consciousness prior to matter, you know, not that oh I yeah, mean, there is, yeah, matter physically and matter dynamically. The it uh, uh, big bang. That's the most stupid thing uh, in the world, existence. Uh, that uh, it all began with the big bang. What 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 are you talking about?" It's a big part of the universe, or what? And uh, and then life, like we are, began. I don't know. There is a uh, there there is a uh, there is simply a, a a matter which we are not able to measure with the devices we have. Yes, 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 yes. And that gets into matter, and uh, when that matter comes, then we are able to work with our consciousness on that matter to bring it back to that state wherein it was and now release it to get back into that state and there is the soul there is the beautiful soul which is immortal and indestructible there we find a relief of the fear and the concept of what is death yes and it uh, and that should become physical and now we have the devices to show uh, by dna research and big microscopes etc how the metaphysics and how the meta dynamics work before while it goes into matter and when it is released it's like a telephone it's a body and when your telephone is kaput your information your consciousness is still in the iCloud it's it's not dependent on our body but with our body we are able to do what those people who are passed away were not able to do and they passed away and their codes their consciousness is encrypted in our genome expressions and now we have found a way to tap in and to clarify and that, thus we do the breathing i bring the people with their consciousness inside and at a certain moment, people begin to yell this and that strange thing. Like two days ago with 800 people. Oh, yeah. Where did you do this? In the round house mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That thing that looks like a hangpan. Mm -hmm. I used, by the way, very good in uh, playing the hangpan. It's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that thing. So, that pan. That's beautiful, yeah. that thing. I know that. You yeah. Know. So but, well, you were there and you hear people have like a sort of speaking in tongues type experiences. Yeah. Like, ah, yeah. Da, da, da. yeah. Yeah, 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 glossalia, like spirits. Uh, captured spirits are very much related to physical genome expressions. Our genetical codes of the past generations uh, are like captivated spirits. Those spirits have lived and they left a certain kind of genome expression, which is embedded in, uh, uh, in the passage through the sperm uh, into our uh, little uh, new conception and... Uh, there it goes to the light and it grows into a baby and it has certain kinds of DNA uh, uh, inscriptions. We are able, being alive, to tap in into the genome expression. It's not only epigenetics. I go a level beyond. 
I mean, in a sense, as you said before, it's an entirely new paradigm that's accessible. When I listen to this, it makes me think that all these billions of years of history and evolution uh, is merely the expression of a conscious force realizing itself as matter until that until its inaugural consciousness can be once again reaccessed. And it feels like we're almost at that point, even though it's a yes. time that seems culturally and socially defined by a certain kind of darkness. Surely this consciousness knows how to realize itself through us. The light will prevail. Yes. The light will prevail. Nice one, man. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Wim. Remember, don't try any of those techniques in bloody water, you lunatics. It's dangerous. Go and look at his website and learn about it properly like I have done and have since become a very, very powerful fella. Next week, we're going to be listening to Teresa Chung. She's a spiritualist. She's a wise woman. She's going to bring some much needed feminine power to this podcast i'm very excited for you all to hear her she was a wonderful person to meet she's written some fantastic books about mysticism and it was very enjoyable talking with her in the meantime you have a listen to some old ones jack monroe adam curtis fern cotton yanis varifakis they've all been on so check them remember i'm doing those live shows at the moment if you want to come and see me go over russellbrand.com and uh mentors the audio book's very good some mates of mine listen to it they said they liked it anyway i love you thanks for listening stay with us bye <laughs>